We're going to start off with the first lab of the year with mineral identification. So here you can see some of your testing kit supplies. This is your streak plate slash ceramic plate. This is your glass plate. <laughs> this is a penny. And here's your knife. You can fold that out. It has a file and a knife. And then this, this is just a mineral. And then here we go. Here is a magnetic rod. So this isn't just a piece of metal. So for the first thing that I'm going to talk about is hardness testing. Now I'm going to go over everything that we're about to do in this lab and I'll do two examples. So I'll run you through the whole lab with two of the 20 minerals you'll be working with. But first I'm just going to explain how the hardness test. So to do this hardness test, usually you'll be prompted, but there are certain items that have certain hardnesses, such as our piece of glass, metal, and ceramic, and the copper penny. So I've included this with your worksheets. If you look into the canvas announcement, I included a piece of paper that is everything you need to know as far as hardness goes. So here we go. Your fingernail has a hardness of 2.5, copper coin 3.2, glass 5, and steel metal right around 6, 6.5. So, for example, when the worksheet asks you, does this have a hardness of five? Well, we know the glass has a hardness of five, right? So is this harder than five? We scratch the glass. It doesn't leave a mark on the glass. So this is softer than glass. So this is less than five. It's all a relative scale. So when you're reporting these things in the lab, just remember you can use a range of hardnesses, say like two to three or three and a half to four and a half, depending on how you scratch them. And another way to tell hardness is if it leaves a streak on the streak plate. So the glass, you're going to try scratching the glass or you can use the glass to try and scratch the mineral depending. Or what you can do is try to streak the mineral. So just remember if a mineral leaves a, a powdered trail of itself, that means it's softer than the plate. So this is still softer than seven as we expected. Now this gets a little bit more confusing once we get lighter colored minerals. So this mineral, is this harder than the seven that is the ceramic, right? So ceramic has hardness right around seven if you look at your worksheet. Well, we'll rub this mineral on it. Now you might think that this mineral is harder than the ceramic plate because it didn't leave any residue. You can't really tell that it was scratched, but if you look carefully, there's some white powder that comes off of the rock. This white powder implies that this rock is actually softer than the ceramic. Now, it'll be pretty obvious that the ceramic's being scratched because you'll feel the mineral digging in instead of sliding on the ceramic plate. So that's general overview of our Mohs hardness scale. Just remember, You'll be testing these known things you have, like your fingernails, to these minerals. So you can give a range, say like 2.5 to 3.2, if you know it's harder than your fingernail and then softer than your copper coin. Moving on, I'm going to talk about cleavage for a second. I've also included a picture of this little handy identification chart for understanding the cleavage of the mineral. Now, when you're doing this lab, you're going to have to explain how many cleavages planes does this mineral have? So here's an easy example. So a cleavage plane is just defined like an axis in three dimensions, essentially. So here you, here's an example of two cleavage planes and three cleavage planes. The important thing to understand with a cleavage plane is they don't intersect. So if you have a mineral with two flat sides that are parallel, that is only one cleavage plane. Now if you have these two parallel flat sides right here, that's your second cleavage plane. And just so you understand, a cleavage plane is where the mineral breaks along the mineral structure. So it's a very clean fracture for the most part. And you'll be able to determine that by seeing how it reflects in the light. So here you can see there's one side that reflects. Now it has a parallel side. So these two parallel sides are our first cleavage plane. Now this one reflects also. So this is another cleavage plane. So one, two, and then here we have our pointy end, which reflects, and those are parallel. So we have three parallel sides, meaning there are three cleavage planes. And an important thing 
is you have to say the angle. So 90 degrees, three at 90 degrees. That's how you'd answer how many cleavage planes there are. Now, for the most part, you're just gonna be answering this question in terms of the stepwise guide. So let's do a couple other examples of cleavage planes just so you understand. Here you have a flat sheet. They cut it so it fit in your rock box, but make most, no mistake, this is just one cleavage plane because it's like a piece of paper, right? One plane. So here we go. This, this has one plane example for you. Now this one has three. And here's an example of two planes. So here you see that reflection. So these two parallel sides, more or less parallel, you get a little bit of reflection, there's a cleavage plane. And here's another reflection, right? So these two flat sides are parallel. So one, two. Now, when you look at this rock facing towards you, this is just a fractured plane. You don't see any reflections, right? It's just a rough, broken part of the rock. So this is two planes right here. That's an example of two cleavage planes. And then finally, this will trick you. This rock, you can see that reflecting surface. Turn it around, another reflecting surface. Then go back to this side, you don't see any reflecting surfaces. So you know there's two planes because these planes aren't parallel, right? They're intersecting. So finally, this is what this rock looks like. So two planes, not at 90 degrees. That's how you'd write it. So this rock is like this, a diamond shape. There are these two planes that aren't at 90 degrees, but there are two planes. So that's basically what you need to know for cleavage. And if you get confused, say you're looking at this rock, not that the stepwise guide will lead you there, but somebody to ask you, how many cleavage planes does this rock have? Well, the answer would be uh, none. This is just a fractured rock. So you could say it's just fractured and that's all you need to say. All right, so now that we've gone over hardness and cleavage planes, we're gonna go over the confusing one I mentioned a little bit earlier called luster. Now, I also wrote up a little bit of a guide to luster for you. Um, this will also be in that canvas announcement in that cheat sheet I kind of made you. So make sure you go check that out. Types of luster, I've kind of done more understandable descriptions of what they might be like. Um, the big thing you really need to remember that I'm gonna highlight here is when in doubt, it is vitreous. It's almost always vitreous. Vitreous means highly reflective sheen, like glass. So the main thing to remember with luster is, luster is the reflection. Like, it's this. It's the reflection, so how well it reflects off of a surface. So if it's more reflective, it has a higher luster. Usually it's vitreous, or sometimes it's metallic. So going over some examples, here are vitreous rocks. So this one, you might be tempted to say that this is metallic, but actually it's vitreous, it looks like glass. Just remember, if it's metallic, it's gonna actually look just like metal. Here's another example of a vitreous rock, it looks like broken glass once again. This one, a little more confusing, but you see that high reflection, it reflects like glass, that's probably gonna be called a vitreous rock also. Um, another trick one, this rock is black, but it has a reflection like glass, even though you can't see through it, right? So a vitreous reflection. So these are all vitreous rocks. When in doubt, it's vitreous. Now, some rocks you can get away with saying they're resinous, perhaps. Now, going back to that list, resinous means it's plastic-like. Um, this rock, you might be able to get away with saying it has a plastic-like reflection, right? You know the difference between 
a plastic window and a glass window. It's kind of the same idea. Now, there's two trick questions that you're gonna have to deal with in your stepwise guide. It's gonna ask you, what is the mineral's color and luster in step nine when you get to maybe both of these minerals? It says, if it has a dark color and a submetallic luster. Now, as we said earlier, metallic, like metal, pretty obvious. Um, submetallic is like a rusted metal, thinking like a rusted nail. So, if it has a dark color and submetallic luster, now this is kind of a trick question, or maybe it's just a badly written one, but a dark color or a submetallic luster is what they're asking. So I can almost guarantee that you're gonna get stuck on either eight or nine. And just remember that these do have a dark color, but maybe not a submetallic luster like they're trying to imply there. So before I get started on identifying some of the minerals as examples with you, I'm just gonna remind you uh, at the end of your canvas quiz where you'll be doing the lab, it's gonna ask you um, about the characteristics of each sample. So what I'd do is I'd keep a running list every time you look at one of these minerals so you don't have to go back to later. So the things you're gonna end up having to write down there usually are color, hardness, cleavage, and luster. Those are all more or less applicable to all the rocks. And then some of them have others. So going on to color is an example. This rock, um, it's like a pinkish orange, so you can say pink, orange. You don't have to be very specific at all. Um, this rock I happen to know has a hardness of less than 2.5. And then cleavage, well, this rock doesn't have any visible cleavage, at least for this part of the mineral. So you could just say fractured in this case. Luster, so a dull luster, and then others. And others don't apply to this, but some minerals will be magnetic. So that's something that you could write as another. Stuff like that. And then just, just as one last reminder, just when you're memorizing minerals, um, hardness is important because this pink mineral, this clear mineral, these are the same minerals despite the different cleavage structure and everything. So just remember, we gotta write down color. Color is really not that important. Okay, so let's go move on to some examples. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go run through a couple of the minerals. Now this is probably gonna be the most useful part for you. I'm gonna do mineral number one first and just follow the guide so you can kind of get an idea how it works. And plus this will be kind of a, a gimme. You'll be able to use this in your exercise. So at least you won't miss everything if all goes worse, <laughs> it'll be fine. So step one, is the mineral harder or softer than a penny? Now, a lot like your streak plate, the easiest way to test this is just scratch that penny with the rock. You should be able to scratch it. Yep, scratch the penny. Also, you can try to scratch the rock. And if you look carefully, the penny comes off onto the rock. So you know that the rock is harder. So step one, it is harder than a penny. So we're going to step two. Does the mineral have a hardness less than five? Now, if you remember hardness of five, pulling out this Mohs hardness page, has hardness of five means glass. So we're gonna test it with some glass. Pulling out that glass plate wherever I put it. And now we're gonna try scratching it. Oh, yep, definitely scratches the glass. Now remember, don't smash the glass. Almost anything can smash glass, but not everything can scratch the glass like your fingernail. So, harder than the glass. Yep, so we're going on to step eight. How many cleavage planes does the mineral have? Now this is another tricky one. Does it have two or does it not have two? Well, 
mineral number one does not have any cleavage planes. So we're going with that, step 10. Oops. So going on to step 10, what is the mineral's luster? Now, I think you kind of get the idea how this is gonna work. When in doubt, it is vitreous in luster, kind of like glass. So we're moving on to step 13. How transparent is the mineral? Now, the mineral is translucent or transparent, it's quartz. If it's opaque, it's garnet. So you might think that this is opaque, but really this is another translucent mineral. So we know this one, number one, is quartz following those steps. All right, so for our second example, we're gonna do this greenish looking mineral, number six. Um, so is the mineral harder or softer than a penny? We're gonna pull out this penny and scratch the penny. Now, this is a good point, and this is why I chose this rock. When you scratch, scratch this rock on the penny, the rock is powdering off onto the penny. And that's not because it is a soft rock per se, but that's just because it's a very structurally weak rock. So just remember that this will still scratch the penny. And that's the main point. If this rock scratches the penny, even if it's breaking, it still means as an inherent hardness instead of a structural hardness. So it is harder than the penny. Going on to step two, does the mineral have a hardness less than five? Now, normally you'd use the glass plate, but I'm gonna use this metal just as an example so you understand how to use the metal for the hardness test. Um, so your metal knife has a hardness of 5.5, but it's pretty hard to tell what's happening when you're scratching it, right? It looks like it scratched the rock, but an easier way to tell is if we get the blade right here and we scratch the blade with this rock. So this rock should be able to scratch the metal on your knife. Yeah, so this scratches that smooth metal surface, so you know it's harder than this metal. So we can keep on moving, just now that you know how to use the metal the easiest way. Does it have a hardness less than five? Um, no, it's harder. Going on to step eight. Step eight, how many cleavage planes does the mineral have? This one also does not have two cleavage planes. This one, on the other hand, that we talked about does have two cleavage planes, just so you remember. So this one does not have two cleavage planes, and we're going on to step number 10. What is the mineral's luster, right? So look in, does any light reflect off of this? Not exactly. So this is what you define a dull luster. There's no light reflecting off of it at all. It looks matte, per se. So this has a dull luster, and it's olivine. And this will probably be in a quiz somewhere. Somebody will quiz you on this. Um, olivine is olive green, and that's one of the only colored minerals you can remember just by its color. So keep that in mind. So now that you understand that, just remember, the quizzes are going to ask you to write some of the defining features of the rocks near the end and short answer. Cleavage planes, the number of them and the angle, that could be a defining feature. And then also the hardness. Write down hardness as a defining feature. And generally just follow the directions. There's all those features such as color and luster that you also have to write down as defining features. And finally, just remember, when in doubt, it's a vitreous rock.